podcasts are found. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. We now switch back yet again to the NFL, going over my fantasy stars in the National Football League for this weekend. Overall, a lot of shocking games, really. A lot of games where, you know, I thought that a couple of big surprises from the early parts of the season would kind of slow down, but no, they kept on going. A lot of new faces on this fantasy list. A lot of kind of unexpected surprises that I didn't expect to see week in, week out on this list as well. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it, but let me know what you think in the comments as I go along because you might have a different opinion that I would love to hear. Let's start off at the quarterback position. This one will really shock a lot of people. Some of you may not even have started these guys at the start of the season, and it certainly was not on my bingo card going into the season to have these guys even be in the conversation as being quote-unquote fantasy stars. Let's start off perhaps the most impressive quarterback in the NFL right now. We gotta give love to Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold in that system really, really is shining in the biggest moments. I don't know what Kevin O'Connell is doing with him, but it's working. And he looks very timely. Four touchdowns, 181 yards, 23.24 fantasy points from Sam Darnold. And I think that he's just gonna continue to grow into the season. I think that this Vikings team is legitimate. And as long as, you know, Justin Jefferson stays healthy, as long as he's willing to distribute the wealth through all his weapons, he's a dangerous quarterback. All of his touchdown throws went to four different receivers, I believe. He had touchdowns to Justin Jefferson, Jalen Naylor, Johnny Munt was like their tight end three starting the season. So it just goes to show that Sam Donald is the most comfortable he's ever been in an NFL offensive system. And if it continues to go, look out for the Minnesota Vikings. This is a team that nobody expected to go 3-0. Nobody expected Sam Darnold to play this well. And especially given the fact that he wasn't even supposed to start this season. The fact that, you know, J.J. McCarthy was all lined up before his injury to start this season. Sam Darnold steps up to the plate, and he is ultimately hitting it out of the park. He could even look like an early MVP candidate, but that might be overstepping myself. But... For what it's worth, he is one of my NFL fantasy stars of the week to start us off in the same room. And how about, and I told you about this guy last week, Malik Willis. Potentially his final game as the full-time starter of the Green Bay Packers against his former team. He kind of made them regret giving him up. 13 of 19, 209 yards, two touchdowns, 73 rushing yards as well. This was a game, right, where Matt LaFleur said, you know, I'm throwing caution to the wind. I'm going to let Malik Willis loose on his former team. And he played very consistently. I was amazed at what he was able to do. Yes, it wasn't a high volume of throws from him. But from what we see, he has been very good. And not for nothing, this may have earned him a backup gig somewhere else. But if you know... Jordan Love is out longer than extended, then I think Packers fans will be quite happy with what they've seen out of Malik Willis. And like I said, Jordan Love should be back next week, but if somehow he's not, or for some reason he's not, then Malik Willis looks prime and ready to go against, ironically, the Vikings. So that would be a very interesting matchup. My two fantasy stars of the week in terms of quarterbacks going up against each other, potentially for the early division lead. With a 25.38 fantasy points from someone who a lot of people weren't even on the radar of. It wasn't, you know, an, an, a known commodity as someone who could be, say, a solid backup or QB too. To have that kind of performance is really something to behold. So, Malik Willis, kudos to you. And with the time that you had with the Packers, hopefully, you know, a team sees this and trusts him with either the backup role or maybe even a starting gig. If you know you're, say, the Titans or the Raiders, maybe going back to the Titans wouldn't be the best of situations, but they are kind of desperate, as we saw in that game. But at the end of the day, Malik Willis is just someone who has 
really silently impressed the NFL these past couple of weeks. Let's go to some more skill position type players. Some guys who really have stepped up in terms of what they mean to their offenses. I want to start off with Malik Neighbors was mentioned during this show. And I just think it's going to become more and more valuable for the New York Giants. Yes, it's going to get to the point where Daniel Jones is kind of forcing the ball to him and that may lead to the detriment of this offense. But he's good enough to at least make an impact on a lot of different games. And they have an interesting schedule coming up. They have the Cowboys. They go on the road to Seattle. That's going to be an interesting game. But, you know, the NFC East certainly doesn't necessarily feel like it's going to want to be won by anyone. This certainly feels like a division that will be up for grabs late in the season. And I'm not saying the Giants will win it outright. But I am saying that the Giants, because of Malik Neighbors and what he brings to the table, could be more competitive than we think. I'm not sure if it will translate to many wins on the field, but just know Malik Neighbors is now going to become more and more reliable to this team. And when I think about what he means to the future of the Giants, right? If you know he is who we say he is and he's going to continue to perform, that could mean that if Daniel Jones doesn't look good but still, you know, is able to distribute the ball to him in a timely manner and get him a lot of yards, it's going to be interesting seeing the whole quarterback situation there because we now know, right, that Malik Neighbors is quite honestly the best receiver Daniel Jones has had in his Giants career. But is he going to lead to the detriment in that Outside of him, this offense really looks unimpressive because it's one thing to have that wide receiver that your franchise quarterback so desperately needs, but it's quite another when he's quite possibly not just your generational wide receiver, but a lifeline in general for your offense. So it's going to be interesting to see at the end of the year because I fully expect Malik Neighbors to continue to grow and develop in this offense. It's going to be interesting to see how the whole Daniel Jones situation is figured out because if, you know, one of these players in this whole situation is playing better than the other, then you might have to check that out. But for now, the Giants pick one nice win against the Browns. Everything's a little bit eased in Giantsville, so for now, we, put, we press pause on the Giants and wait and see for them. And then another guy who really was the difference between a win and a loss, and who I said in these kind of situations would have to step up, Jonathan Taylor. 23, car 23 carries, 110 yards, 2 touchdowns, 26.5 fantasy points. Like I said, Jonathan Taylor is going to be very important to the rhythm of the Colts' offense and, most importantly, to Anthony Richardson's development. And yesterday, he really proved that he can really help Anthony Richardson out in the backfield because Anthony Richardson really kind of looked lost yet again in this game. He made some impressive throws, and he made some throws that should have been completed and could have been completed by any other quarterback, for that matter. So, just the fact that Jonathan Taylor is rounding back into form, getting back into being the running back we know he can be, is going to be very important for the Colts moving forward in offense because the defense looked pretty decent. Yes, it was against the Bears' offense, and the Bears' offense has not looked the best it's a bit can possibly be. But, you know, if they can combine timely offense with complementary defense together, the Colts could be brewing something. It all depends on what Anthony Richardson can become, but just knowing they have Jonathan Taylor there should put them at ease for a little bit because he is something to behold in that offense. Then how about, let's go to a tight end here. Let's go to another difference maker as well. All of these guys, in some way or other outside of potentially the quarterbacks that I discussed, all with a difference between their teams winning and losing. You look at Malik Neighbors and Jonathan Taylor, you can definitely point to their performances as bright spots for their wins. This guy, definitely. Dallas Goddard. 
10 catches, 170 yards, 27 fantasy points. And like I said, week in, week out, the, t- the tight end market is going to be the most volatile in all of fantasy football, right? Because you never know who's going to perform well. Well, Dallas Goddard certainly stepped up to the plate, had the big catch that really was the difference in this game, the 61 yard, and to set them up for their touchdown. So kudos to Dallas Goddard for really stepping up. He's one of those tight ends who you kind of get lost in the mix about, you know, because you have all these high-end tight ends that you really want to swing for the fences on. And you kind of forget about all the guys in the middle, like a Dallas Goddard, like, say, when he comes back with TJ Hawkinson, who really can have big games week in, week out. And not for nothing, he's now going to become much more important. Yes, the Devontae Smith injury isn't as serious, but even when he comes back, Dallas Goddard's going to have a bigger role in this offense for as long as you know A.J. Brown is still going to be out. And the fact that him and Saquon really stepped up in that situation was impressive. And that's what's going to be needed for this Philadelphia Eagles offense. It kind of feels a little disjointed outside of them. But Dallas Goddard really setting the tone late in that game for the Eagles offense. And then, how about Jawan Jennings, man? Jawan Jennings, really impressive. Really stepped up to the plate. Ultimately, it was in somehow a losing effort. The Rams came back in this game. But Jawan Jennings proved that it's not just McCaffrey. It's not just Kittle. It's not just Samuel. I told you. Jawan Jennings is still a very important piece for this 49ers team, especially on the offensive side of the football. 11 catches, 175 yards, 3 TDs, 46.5 fantasy points for Jawan Jennings. Now, obviously, we don't know how long Jawan Jennings is going to be of importance to a fantasy squad. But for the time being, utilize this guy to the best of your abilities. If he's still on waivers, pick him up because he's going to be very desirable over these next couple of weeks as we get more updates about, you know, the injuries to this 49ers squad. But it just goes to show that on any given Sunday, when your team is kind of reeling and you need someone to give you a pick-me-up, you have a guy like Jawan Jennings on your team. That just goes to show the depth of what the, the 49ers have built in their team. And last but not least, let's talk about Dak Prescott. Yes, you know, it was kind of a garbage time comeback, but still an impressive performance. He showed a lot of moxie in this performance going into that Thursday night game against New York. 379 yards, 2 TDs, 29.86 fantasy points. Kind of really won me one of my fantasy games in my auto-draft league, so I'm thankful to Dak for that. But ultimately, it was a very disappointing loss for Dallas. We don't know their future, but it just goes to show that Dak still has a lot of moxie at the QE position. He still hasn't given up, you know, on Mike McCarthy and this offense. So look for Dak to be one of those quarterbacks who you either have as a QB2 in a deeper league or you say, you know, Dak, he will still perform pretty well for me in certain weeks. So I'm going to stick him out there once in a while to get a start. But let me know what you think in the comments about my NFL fantasy stars because all these guys in some way were very timely in their play. All of them a lot to offer this week and a lot to think about going forward. But coming up next to conclude our show, we talk about some stardom cinema situations for Monday Night Football. A lot of two different games to think about, a lot of players as well. So we'll be right back to finish the show right after this break with that segment. 